There are only three types of bad guys. The bad guy on the outside, the bad guy on the inside, and the stupid guy on the inside. We call those last two types of bad guys the insider threat. That's the employee who either intentionally or accidentally presents a risk to the organization. Insider threat detection is one of those areas that AI can play a strong role, but using AI for detection is only the beginning of a process. Today on Humans and Machines, we're going to talk about insider threat detection and beyond with someone who has thought a lot about this, Jim Fitzsimmons from Control Risks. Jim, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thanks very much for having me. Looking forward to it. It's a pleasure. Jim Fitzsimmons is a principal in the cybersecurity consulting team at Control Risks, responsible for managing and delivering complex security projects. His work focuses on the business impact of cybersecurity risk. His work with clients includes evaluating and mitigating the business risk of information and technology regulations, threat-led cybersecurity risk assessments, and supporting clients to manage cybersecurity incidences and crises. He has over 25 years of experience in providing IT security and consulting services Services to a variety of government agencies and industry verticals in the United States, China, Vietnam, and Singapore. Jim, welcome to the show. Uh, you have an impressive background, obviously, with quite a large focus in Asia. You first went to Shanghai back in 2005, then to Vietnam in 2012, and then to Singapore, all in various impressive roles related to security and compliance. Now, this is the video version of the podcast here. So uh, I'm just going to speak to the elephant in the room. I look more Asian than you do. So I have to ask, according to my calculations, you've been in Asia for over 15 years. What led you to Asia and what keeps you there? Thanks very much, Stefan. Um, you know, I've been in Asia not only, I mean, almost half my life. I grew up here uh, in the 70s in Singapore. So I've had a long-standing interest in Asian society and culture uh, and Asia's past for a very, very long time. And, you know, living here, working as a technologist for the past 15 years, what's really interesting is also Asia's future and the rise of mobility, the, adop <coughs> excuse me, the adoption of the cloud, and how, you know, in these sort of large, complex societies and these sometimes very, very fractious cultures, how technology and, and information is used, regulated, um, for a variety of purposes. So it's a fascinating place and I'm very lucky to be here. That's so great to hear. It is uh, such an interesting world that we live in now. We are more connected than ever before, but despite being so connected, it's always interesting to see these little important differences from country to country, from culture to culture. Uh, one of the things that really struck me when we originally spoke is that, as you know, on humans and machines, we, we focus on AI technologies and their impact on this real world, on the connected world that we're part of. And so I was excited when you told me that you thought insider threat would be a good topic for a conversation. So what is it about insider threat that makes it so amenable to an AI-based approach? Well, so the first to think about what that threat is and what that risk looks like, you know, it's an age-old problem in human society, is that when you have a group of people, how do you trust everyone? And in some cases, there's always going to be someone uh, that you can't trust. Right? That's that insider problem that you talked about. And so when you think about this from, a, from an information security perspective, the idea is that how do you manage this problem? And you know, historically, we've often thought, okay, well, you profile people and you, and you track their movements and you track what they do, right? You wanna create an environment where you can under, like, understand what the information may be, you know, who would be interested in it. Now, what's interesting about the insider is that an insider has a, a knowledge around what the information is, where it is, who may be interested in it, its value, and also they have access to it. So that would makes it a very, very unique problem to manage. And so, you know, here in this region, we have a lot of clients in the manufacturing space, we have a lot of clients in the financial services space who are very, very concerned about the data that they have could be misused. And it's not to say that, that there's a lack of trust or anything like that. It's much more this idea that there's a risk that they're not sure that they're managing the right way. And that's that insider risk aspect of it. And so, you know, when we think about how do you manage these kinds of risks, it's always been, you know, there's uh, due diligence and background checks. And then, you know, as the technology curve kind of has started to, to grow, it's all around logging and, and monitoring and things like that. But I think, as you well understand, 
the, the challenge is, is that in today's world, the amount of data that you generate when you're trying to, to track access or track activities is massive because now all activity around, around work to some degree or another involves technology. And so trying to sift through all those kinds of uh, those data issues, that's where we see um, the value of AI. Yeah, and I very much agree, um, especially when you think about, uh, you know, there, there's, I mentioned at the top, there are these two classes of insider threats. There's mm. the, the malicious insider who is truly trying to steal stuff. And then there's the, you know, accidental insider threat who doesn't mean to do harm. They just don't know any better, but they're still presenting a risk to the organization. Unknowingly. Right. And so background checks aren't going to catch that. At the same time, you also have a class of individuals that have authorized access to authorized applications, to authorized machines, to authorized data. So they're right. doing everything that they're authorized to do, but they're still presenting the rest of their organization. So how do you, how do you find that standard access control doesn't work? And I, I see that as a good spot for techniques like anomaly detection. So. You're, you're finding the weird, the unusual, the, the, the unexpected, which yeah. is often quite correlative with uh, an insider threat risk. Well, well, look, I mean, if you think about it, you know, in, in any situation, you know, if, you're, if you take sort of an investigator's lens or you think about it from a, from, uh, from a risk management perspective, what you're looking for is anomalies, just as you said. Right. And so, you know, but part of the challenge is, is that how do you know what's weird? How do you know what's strange? That's not always so evident. And so having the tools in place to say that, okay, we're going to collect a ton of information, right? right? So that's one thing you can do. Anyone can do that. It's not necessarily hard as long as you have the disk space for it, right? But then you need to be able to establish, okay, what does normal look like? And that's that first stage where, you know, where this kind of technology, and again, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a sort of an AI expert in the same way that you are. I have much more of a, of a practical approach to it is just saying that, okay, what is a tool that can tell me what normal looks like? And that's what some of these tools can do. This, this user, be, user behavior analysis um, function that establishes, okay, this is either for you know, a group of roles or a group of people. This is what normal looks like. And now mm -hmm. let's see spikes around what kind of behavior we think are anomalies, which could be something for an investigation. Absolutely. And of course, I, I'm, as you know, I'm a big fan of AI and a big fan of this, this technique. And I have seen it because it's essentially automated. I've seen it do some amazing things because only automation is able to sort of go through that much data and collect that much information yeah. and measure that many different vectors of normal to try and reduce false positives and truly surface the most interesting things. But as big as a, of a fan I it might be about AI, no matter how cool this technology is, I, I know that's just one yeah. component of an effective insider threat program. So may, maybe let's talk about what happens next. What happens after? the AI has found a potential insider threat. Well, that's a really good point because that's where, you know, as a firm, we have a lot of, we support a lot of our clients with investigations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially in the technology realm, people can really feel that, oh my gosh, I can do this and I can find this out. I can, I can identify who's the bad actor. And generally that's really the wrong approach because investigatory skills are very, very different from technology skills. And it really takes um, a very, very structured approach around you know, identifying what a potential incident could be. So there's that first part around saying, okay, do we know what's important? Do we know what the risk is? Do we know what the systems that, that could potentially be affected, uh, affected by something like this? So having that kind of a, a structure in place that first says, okay, what are we worried about, right? And then if we're worried about something, what are sort of the conditions, what are the triggers that we would establish for an investigation? This is very, very important because these kinds of things are not something that you can just, um, you know, in a haphazard way, say, okay, mm -hmm. this person can do it, that person can do it. Oh, let's look at this, let's look at that. Because what you're doing is, is that um, you're investigating people. You're investigating right. people's activities. And that could be, you know, there could be regulatory requirements around that. There could be legal implications for that. So it all has to be done in a very, very careful, very, very structured way. So that, that process, we think, is very, very important. And having the right kind of policies around it, which would say, who directs these kinds of investigations? Who has the authority to initiate one? What are the conditions under which it should be operated? What is the output? How should the output be evaluated? These are the elements of it that, you know, again, what AI can do is it can, it can put up the red flag, and that's great. 
But what it can't do is to go through that process where you say, okay, now that we understand we, that we have a red flag, what are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Who's going to be responsible for it? What is the, the outcome? Where does, what is our end goal that we're looking for? Yeah, that, that's a really good way of approaching it. And it really strikes me how this, this is another example, people process technology, right? So yeah. technology is like just one part of it. You know, uh, people, you have, you have a team that understands uh, the framework for compliance and regulations that, uh, that are surrounding an investigation. Uh, mm. Do you have a process in place so that when you detect an insider threat, right, you know what to do, you know what the next steps are, you know which groups to engage. Uh, it really is um, uh, quite complex in, in the real world. Do you have like a framework that you typically recommend or a thought process that when you engage with your clients on setting up an effective insider threat program that you typically walk them through? Well, so, so for us, I mean, we approach these things very much from a risk-based um, structure. So, so it's really all derived from what we think our information is, that, 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 or what our clients think the information that's, that's really relevant. And then off that, you know, basically creating a, an institutional structure, right? So that's a very sort of uh, pompous way of saying, you need a policy. And as much as, 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 as simplistic and, as, and as, as sort of, you know, dry and bureaucratic and boring as that sounds, you know, dry, bureaucratic and boring is very important, right? Because what you want to do is that everyone needs to be treated in a consistent manner. You need to have a consistent approach to how you deliver and, and, and execute these kinds of investigations. Because if you don't, you're opening yourself up to liability in some cases. And also at, at a more basic level, you want to be fair. I mean, um, mm-hmm. particularly, you know, we have clients that are multinational companies that operate all over the world. And what's really, really important is is, is that um, you, you kind of have the faith and confidence in your in your team and your employees. That's that's done in a consistent way. We would always say that you should never have an approach that says, "Okay, well, I want to target people of a certain nationality," or "I think you know my risk in, in this country is 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 infinitely more acute than my risk in another country." What we would say is that, especially now in an age of technology, the risk is you know the source of that risk is is mutable. It can be almost anywhere. And so what we think is really important is to have a very, very structured approach that would say, okay, we've identified a situation, we see a red flag, but now we go into a process that's very, very structured. That we say, okay, we think it's this person, but we, these are the conditions that we have to go through. And then at the end of that, there's also, you know, is, that, is there a question, do you fire that person? Or do you, you know, do you pass that information on to the police? That process, it has to be governed. It has to be very, very structured. And you really, you know, in some ways, you need it need that to be led to be led by internal counsel, which supported by external counsel. You need the lawyers uh, just to make sure that everything is being done in a way that's consistent with local regulation. And you also want to be fair to your employees. Yeah, it's it's a good point. Uh, I mean, fairness. I mean, at the end of the day, we're we're dealing with people. Yeah, right? uh, these are human beings with lies and motives and emotions and feelings, and so the concept of fairness is is really intriguing to me. I guess that brings up a, a very unique nature of insider threat. It's the hot, the importance of ethics and compliance. So, no matter yeah. what country you're in, insider threat always seems to be a little bit tricky because humans are directly involved. So there are always ethical and regulatory and compliance considerations as well. Do you have any thoughts and advice for the security practitioner audience in, the, in our podcast in this particular area? Well, you know, we've done a lot of work over the past few years around the expanding regime of technology regulation and information handling regulation, of which AI regulation is a part of it. Now, we haven't necessarily seen it, you know, um, in the, the investigatory process, but that aspect of understanding how AI is becoming regulated we think is very, very important. Because, you know, when these, um, when, I mean, and it's in such a brief period of time, I think you probably understand it far better than I do. But, you know, a few years ago, it was this, you know, this magic pixie dust kind of technology that people were deploying for all sorts of different purposes. And what's happened is, is that regulators are looking at this and they're becoming uncomfortable because, you know, there may be decisions being made on who can get a loan. There may be decisions on who gets hired, maybe mm-hmm. decisions on who gets fired. Um, you know, or uh, insurance or whatever it might be, or like what products you're shown or what information you're shown that is being done in a way that's, that's by these sort of autonomous technology platforms, you know, machine learning platforms that are unregulated. 
and some of those the impact of those kinds of uh, those kinds of sort of unregulated machine learning decisions right could have implications much more broader than an organization or an individual and so regulators are looking at this particularly in this region and they're starting to get uncomfortable and as they get more uncomfortable the regulatory environment around this stuff is starting to grow yeah it's 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 an interesting time for sure i know china just released some of their statements around regulation of ai uh, Europe did the EU did something similar about a month ago. So people are really starting to wrap their arms around this very, very sort of difficult, challenging, thorny problem about you know how do I regulate an AI and how do I make it ethical and fair. But it's definitely a conversation worth having. Yeah, Jim, thank, this was so much fun. Do you have any sort of final parting words of wisdom? Um, maybe drawing upon your sociology degree if you would like for our audience? You know, uh, I mean, it's a really exciting time in the technology space, uh, particularly in Asia. But, you know, what we see is that, um, you know, as society is, is, is being changed by technology and so many governments are embracing that change, technology has become so important. It's, it's seen as it's sort of the, 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 uh, the pathway to, to a next level of, of sort of economic and social development. It also brings risk. It also brings unanticipated risks, and regulators all around the world, like in the U.S., we just saw it with the uh, the pipeline issue. Um, you know, we see it. Uh, you know, it, I do a lot of China work, and we say there's all sorts of regulations coming out now. Regulators are looking at this technology risk, and they're understanding that that some of these risks are much bigger than an individual organization or a group of people. They're societal risks, and so we see that the the regulatory aspect of this, and it's going to apply to to, to machine learning. Is coming back and it's coming back strong. So we think about this as in, in the context of digital sovereignty, and we really believe that the state is reasserting control over a technology space that, for many years, it really and it grew coming out of the United States where it was wasn't regulated, and we think that's going to change and it'll change pretty quickly. Well, very exciting times for sure. Definitely watch the space, Jim. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. Stefan, my pleasure.